Peace, this is Rahil, and uh, this is another Saturday sermon. Whoever comes in here, uh, thank you. Peace and love to you. Um, for those who don't make it, um, I'm going. this is going to be posted so you can share it, listen to it, uh, go back through the uh, verses that I hit. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about steps to believing. So last week, we talked about um, praying, asking God for understanding, for wisdom and knowledge. And we found out that when you do pray, God will grant those things to you. He will, God will lead you to, uh, to understanding of thing, of people, and even things through the scriptures. It's going to take you to it, to uh, wisdom. He's going to grant you wisdom. And so um, we're going to talk a little bit about the steps towards believing God. Um, because there's a particular process into which you will believe God. You know, you're not going to believe God unless you hear from God. At least that's what the scriptures tell us. So we're going to get into this. I'm going to hit a number of scriptures out. Um, and if you have any questions later on, you can always uh, inbox me or even uh, respond back to this post when um, when necessary. And just want to make some clarifications. Um, this this is for me as well as it is for you, just so you know. So I'm ministering to myself as I'm ministering to you going through these scriptures. Um, I won't be as long-winded as I was last week, but I will be hitting a lot of points because um, I got some places to go today. And anyway, um, also I want to make clarification. You might hear me interchange different names of God. Um, and I usually try not to, I'm going to use God just to be general, but um, I usually refer to God as in the original name of Yahweh and um, also Jesus in the original Hebraic uh, translation of Yahshua. So you might hear me say Yahshua, you might hear me say Christ, you might hear me say Jesus. Uh, so if you hear any of those, I'm talking about the same one, the same Lord, the same God. It's only one Lord and one God, so you might hear me interchange all of those. So just so you understand, um, and this last week somebody asked me what I was reading out of last week, and I think it was the NLT, the New Living Translation. Um, I don't get too caught up on translations, but there are some key things in, within translations that might be missing from, like some certain things scriptures are missing from NIV. Um, so I try to stay away from NIV. But this version that I'm going to read to you today is going to be, um, it's called the Names of God Bible. And I like it because it sticks to the traditional names. So that way I want to get you guys, as long as you listen in, get you a company to uh, hearing the original names. So you can start praying in the original names um, because there's power in it. Um, I know, you know, you can call on Jesus and there's power in saying that and I do believe Yahweh understands who you're talking about, but um, I've just in my life I've witnessed once I start using the original names, getting to the more he, he, uh, excuse me, um, the Hebrew names, uh, Hebraic names, um, my my faith, my belief, and the power seem to have become more much more potent, and uh, and God's been and God been hearing my prayers. So, I mean, but that's just my my experience, and I can talk about that later on. But anyway, I don't want to um, aggress, but just want to get those out the way. Uh, we're talking about uh, steps to believing. And so I'm going to start in Romans, where um, Paul is addressing, the Apostle Paul is addressing the Roman church and discussing about uh, believing and what it is uh, to mean to be saved and steps towards believing. So I'm starting Romans uh, chapter 10, verse uh, 12. We'll start there. Or actually 11, we'll start there. Scripture says, when he says scriptures, he's talking about the Old Testament. Scripture says, whoever believes in him, talking about uh, Christ, will not be ashamed. There is no difference between Jews and Greeks. They all have the same Lord. Who gives his riches to everyone who calls on him. So then whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So if you stop there. You would believe. And people preach this. 
that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So they say, just call on Jesus and you're going to be saved. Call on him because Jesus, the name Jesus means Yahweh saves. So call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Now, that sounds that sounds good. I mean, now I'm telling you, there's been times where I've had dangers and I've had to call on the name of the Lord and I was literally saved physically, like saved. Um, but in terms of believing in the Lord, they say, "Well, you just just profess the name of the Lord and and you'll be sa and now you're saved." You know, you you watch I watch um a lot of tele tele um tele evangelists, they do this. They say, "Well, confess the Lord Jesus and now you're saved." Go find a Bible believing church. I'm sure you've heard this if you watch any of those. No, that's not where belief begins and ends. That's not it. Um, so so Paul is going to get into what is believing and the steps towards believing at this point. So we read in 13. So then whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Verse 14. Paul says, but how can people call on him? If they have not believed in him. So how can you call on God? How can you call on Christ? If you haven't believed in him. And how can they believe in him. If they not have not heard his message. So how can you believe in Christ. If you haven't heard Christ's message. If you haven't heard the message of Christ. If you haven't heard the message of salvation. If you haven't heard anything um, that came out of the scriptures, the Old Testament, concerning him. And then he goes on to say, he says, how can they believe in him if they have not heard his message? How can they hear if no one tells the good news? So, if you haven't heard the good news, you can't believe. How can you believe a message that you haven't heard yet? So, somebody tells you, comes up and tells you, well... Um, if you're like, man, I'm looking for, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm going to believe in God or not, this and that. And then somebody says, well, just uh, call on the name of the Lord and you're saved. Just believe in the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. They're in error. They're, if they just leave it right there and they don't explain to you anything, any back stuff, any backstory of it, of who the Lord is, and all these things that you need to know to believe, then you that's probably not the best person you need to be talking to. So he says, how can people tell the good news or the gospel if if no one sends them? So this person who's going to be preaching or teaching this gospel has to be sent. So first of all, when it comes to believing, it says, how can you call on him if you have not believed? So you can't call on the name of the Lord unless you believe on him. Is how can they believe in him if they have not heard the message? So you have to hear the message of of Christ. You got to hear the truth. And then um, it says, how can they hear if no one tells them the good news, meaning the truth, the gospel? And it says, how can people tell the good news if no one sends them? You know, so you have to hear the gospel from someone who was sent. And so you can't believe you got to hear the gospel. So that's the biggest that's the biggest thing is where it begins. You have to hear. You have to hear the truth. If you don't hear the truth, you're not going to be able to uh know anything about God, you're not going to know anything about salvation, you're not going to be able to receive this gift of the Holy Spirit that's that's promised to every one of us. Um the power of God within us. Um and then it goes on to say uh as the scripture says, talking about the Old Testament, whenever you see it says, as the scripture says, or if the law and the prophets is talking about the Old Testament. See, these guys in the New Testament are quoting Old Testament scriptures um, because that is where you will find Christ. That's where you'll find the truth is in the Old Testament. Um, so anytime New Testament, they're always referring back to the scriptures or the Old Testament. So that's just a key word and hint when it comes to studying scripture. Um, but he says, how can people, going back to verse 15, how can people tell the good news if no one sends them? As scripture says, how beautiful are the feet of the messengers who announce the good news? But not everyone has believed the good news. Um, 
Isaiah asks, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith, let's conclude this. So faith comes from hearing the message, and the message that is heard is what Christ spoke. Wow. Okay, so we got it here. What is believing? What is believing then? Believing is we have to how what are the steps towards believing? You have to first of all, you have to hear the gospel message by by someone who was sent by God or by Yahweh. Now, how do you know the person is sent by God? See, there's millions of preachers out there. There's billions of preachers out there. But how do you know that someone was sent by God to teach you the gospel message? And then we'll get into what is the gospel message. But before we get to that, we got to figure out who's teaching this. You know, I mean, how do you know that I'm somebody that you can refer to? Because I'm, I'm sitting here teaching you. I'm pre I mean, I'm preaching and teaching to you. How do you know I'm sent or not sent? How do you know? How can you tell? You know, you have your T.D. Jakes on TV. You have, um, what's your guy there with the big church cornerstone? I forgot his name. Um, he talks like this. Hey, guys. Um, I, can't, I forgot his name. Real big guy. Uh, real huge preacher there. And I think in Texas anyway. Um, you know, you have... You got all all your, your your televangelists. You know you had your your bishop Eddie Longs. You know he's gone now, but all these big preachers. You know Creflo Dollar, all of them. How do you know these people are sent? How do you know the person? If you're if you're somebody who goes to church every day, how do you know that the pre the the, the pastor that you're under? How do you know they're sent by God? And not just because you feel good about it, but how do you know that these people who are on 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 TV are sent? Because in order to believe, you have to hear the gospel message and you have to hear from somebody who was sent. All right. So we have to determine who was sent by God. I could be telling you anything. I could be a false prophet here. You know, how do you determine that? Or I could be telling you the genuine truth. I could be truthfully honest. How do you know? Well, let's go to John. 17 and we did this last week but let's go to john 17 verse 17 through 21 i'm gonna go to john real quick read this real quick um let's see it's fine john and we're going to discover how do you know uh that somebody is sent of god how do you determine that we have to figure out who well this is the thing we have to determine who did god himself send because uh there's a lot of people that god sent there's a lot of people he got he sent uh to t to teach different things within out the within the scriptures. But um we're gonna determine who he who he sent here. Hold on one more moment here. I'm sorry. Just getting used to this um this uh, I'm doing this Bible through my tablet, so bear with me one moment, I'm sorry. Uh I'm trying to get to the other verses. So we're going to John 17. Just bear with me going to John 17. All right, I'm about to go to uh, here. Search John 17. Sorry, y'all. Uh, thanks, Carol, for coming in and watching. Um, I'm about to get into this here. And uh, John, love you, cuz. By the way, love you. Um, all right. So, so John 17, so we have uh, Jesus or Yahshua praying for the disciples, okay? He's praying for them because pretty soon he's going to be crucified in this at this point. And so he's praying for them that they, um, that, that they be used to go out and spread the truth. So he says in John 17, verse 17, use the truth to make them holy. Your words are truth. I have sent them into the world the same way you sent me into the world. Now, this is Christ praying as a man for the disciples. As a man, as a human being, he's praying. And I have to make that clarification because people are wondering, well, if Jesus is the Lord. If he is God, if Yahshua is Lord God, then who is he praying to? No, as a human being, as a man in flesh, 
he still, even though he is the Lord himself by, by way of spirit, as a man in the flesh, he has to pray because no flesh is going to glory, get the glory. Only uh, the spirit, only God gets the glory. So as a man, yes, he's going to pray. So I want to make that clarification. So he's praying for the disciples, just as any human being should pray for one another. I'm not praying for, oh, oh excuse me, 17 uh, chapter 17 verse 17 of John use the truth to make them holy your words are truth I have sent them into the world the same way you sent me into the world I'm dedicating myself to this holy work I'm doing for them so that they too will use the truth to be holy I'm not praying only for them I'm also praying for those who will believe in me through their message I pray that all of these people continue to have unity in the way you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. I pray that they may be united with us so that the world will believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me. I did this so that they are united in the same way we are. I am in them, and you are in me. So they are completely united in this way the world knows that you have sent me and that you have loved them in the same way you have loved me so what jesus is saying is he said i'm praying not only for them but for those who believe in me through their word through their message so he sent them he said i have sent them into the world the same way you sent me into the world so so now let's say who was sent. So we're going back to, to Romans 10. He says, um, you have to believe someone who was sent. You have to believe the gospel message from someone who was sent. So the only people who were sent were the disciples that were with Christ, who we now call the apostles. The apostles were the ones who were sent. So that's how you know if, if anybody is following the teachings, the preachings of the apostles in the scriptures, then you know that they're sent from God. They're sent by God. As far as people today, if they're not adhering to the, the scriptures according to the apostles, then you know that they're either false or they're not preaching truth. They're not pre run away from them. Get away from them. Or if you if you have the opportunity to correct them, cor try to correct them, even though it's kind of hard to correct people who are in a position who feel like, you know, if they're pastors or preachers, they've arrived. It's kind of hard to correct them. But um, that's how you know they're sent, because Christ himself said he sent his disciples. He said, I sent them into the world in the same way I was sent in the world. I'm sending them into the world. So they're the ones who were sent that that is talked about in um, that we talked about in, in Romans. And so you have to. So let's go back. We're going, we're going to go right back real quick. Uh, hold on here. Got to go back. Romans 10. So go back to Romans 10. And says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can people call on him if they have not believed in him? And then it says, how can they believe in him if they have not heard his message? So you have to hear the gospel. You have to hear the message. And how can people tell the good news if, if no one sends them? As scripture says, how beautiful are the feet of the messengers who have announced the gospel, the good news. So you have to hear the, the truth in order to believe you have to hear the truth you have to hear the good news you have to hear a message you have to hear about who God is what salvation is you have to hear these things and then you have to hear them from someone who was sent someone who knows the truth someone who was sent only people who were sent were the disciples the who became the apostles of Christ he sent them and he prayed that not only for them but he put pray that for anyone who will believe in their message so if you believe what the apostles said jesus 
himself has prayed for you to believe. He prayed for you all that time ago. He prayed for you. He prayed for me. He's prayed for all of us to believe in the, the apostles. Now, we have so we understand we have to hear. We can't call on God unless we hear the truth and we hear from somebody who was sent. We understand now the person who was sent was sent by Christ, by God himself. And so today, the modern day church, the modern day believers, we have to adhere to what the apostles preached and teach because they were sent. The apostles were sent by God, as we read according to St. John chapter 17, 17, and verse 17 through 20. They were sent. So if you're going to a church or you're going or you're listening to somebody and you're hearing them talk, and if they're not repeating or echoing what the apostles taught, then you might want to steer clear of them or stay away from them. They may not know what they're talking about. That's why you always should you you know you should always uh, have your scriptures and you should all, and whatever people are saying they should be backing it up by scripture if they're going to be teaching and preaching the gospel and uh, the Bible. But um, let's let's go a little bit further. Um, so we did determine that, and so um, I'm going to back what I set up by um, something that Paul discusses later on in scripture, and it's in uh, Ephesians two. Good morning, baby. Get your um hold on one moment, people. Get start packing your clothes up. All right, you need to get like three outfits and some night clothes um, now. Okay, all right. So now we're, I'm about to head over to Ephesians really quick because I want to read this just to back up what I'm saying because I'm I want to make sure that uh, whatever I tell you I'm backing it up with two or three scriptures. Okay, um so now. Um, I said, as I said, you have to believe, um, you have to hear from somebody sent, hear the truth from someone that he sent, and um, that person has to be sent by God. Now, um, I'm going to fast forward, Ephesians 2, and we'll go start at 19 and 20, and this is uh, Paul addressing the Ephesian church. Get, no, get back, because I'm in the video. What are you doing? I Do what I told you, okay? Hold on, please. In the please. bathrooms, there's too much toilet paper. Okay. In it, the toilet. Okay, we'll flush it. Okay. It, and it was upstairs. Okay. Well, I don't know who put it in there, but just flush it, okay? All right. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Let's go back here. All right. Uh, let's. I mean, I mean, I like to go a little bit before. Uh, I hit that 20 like I want to hit. Um, so let's go back to Ephesians 2.13. But now through Christ, Yeshua, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So he is our peace. In his body he has made Jewish and non-Jewish people one by breaking down the wall of hostility that kept them apart. He brought an end to the commands and demands found in Moses' teaching so that he could take Jewish and non-Jewish people and create one new humanity in himself. So he made peace. He also brought them back to God in one body by his cross on which he killed the hostility. He came with the good news of peace for you who were far away and those who are near. So Jewish and non-Jewish people can go to the Father in one spirit. That is why you are no longer foreigners and outsiders by, but, see, but citizens together with God's people and members of God's family. Okay, here you go. Here's the key. You are built on the foundations of the apostles and prophets. The apostles who are the people who, the 12 men, the men who followed Christ throughout his life, that he taught everything. He says, you, talking about the Ephesian church, are built on the foundation of the apostles. And then he says, and the prophets. What is he talking about? The Old Testament, the prophets, the people from the Old Testament, the prophets, the people who prophesied the coming Messiah and everything that was going to happen. Because at least five or six hundred years prior to Christ arriving on the scene as a human human being in the Old Testament, they prophesied that these things would happen to him, that he'd be born, 
um, in Bethlehem that he would be crucified, that he would teach the gospel, that he would be persecuted, all these different things, and that he would rise. All this was in the Old Testament long before he came. So the apostles taught the same thing. We're going to go in the book of Acts in a minute and, sh and see what did, they, what did they teach. How you know they're sent? Because they maintained the same message of salvation. Um, throughout they never deviated from it they maintain the message and then if there was any discrepancy which there was one and that was only because of the Gentiles in Acts chapter Acts 15 they discussed it they worked out the the, uh, the, the particulars but anyway let me finish this Ephesians 2 and 20 you are built on the foundation of the Apostles and prophets Christ Yahshua himself is the cornerstone in him, all the parts of the building fit together and grow into a holy temple in Yahweh. Through him, you also are being built in the spirit together with others into a place where God lives. So, as, as, I, as I've said, we're going back to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, you have to hear the gospel, but you can't believe in the Lord or anybody until you hear the truth. And it has to be from somebody sent. And as we discussed in John chapter 17, 17 through 20, Jesus himself sent the apostles. He sent his disciples who were now the apostles. He sent them. And then later on, Paul, who came in as one of the last uh, apostles, he came in and he said to the Ephesian church that they are built on the foundations of the apostles, which are the ones who were sent. And the prophets, the prophets talking about the Old Testament, those people were sent by Yahweh himself in the Old Testament. So you have to hear the truth from the apostles and the prophets. So from the apostles in the New Testament, the prophets and the people who wrote in the Old Testament. And you have to hear the truth from them. And on then only then will you be able to believe. And if I'm lying... I'm not lying, because let me let me tell you. Let me go to John. I'm about to go to John chapter seven, verse eight, and I'm a, and this is what Jesus Himself, out of His own mouth, He said. Y'all have to hear this. All right, so let me go to John chapter seven, verse 30, 37 and thirty. I'm sorry here, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, and thirty-nine. Okay. On the last and most important day of the festival, Yahshua, Jesus, was standing in the temple courtyard. He said loudly, whoever is thirsty must come to me to drink. As scripture says, and we said, we, as we said earlier, scripture means Old Testament. As scripture says, streams of living water will flow from deep within the person who believes in me. Yahshua said this about the spirit whom his believers would receive. The spirit was not yet evident as it would be after Yahshua had been glorified. So he hadn't been uh, crucified and risen from the dead. So you have to believe according to the to the to the scriptures. Not not only the apostles, but you have to believe according to the Old Testament. You have to find Jesus in the Old Testament. If you don't find Jesus in the Old Testament, you can't believe. There's no way to believe. So, I mean, if I come to you and say, well, you know, Jesus died for your sins and he rose from the dead. And if you believe this, too, you will be saved. I can't just say that. I can't just say that. Now, I have I have to explain what that means. See, people can just say that. But the apostles explain exactly what that meant. The people, the prophets of the Old Testament explain what that means. So you have millions of preachers and teachers going around telling you, you know, believe in Jesus and you'll be saved. I did that one time when I when I did when I didn't have the Holy Spirit. I did that one time because I had realized some truth and I was on fire. I went up to a, a woman and told her that. And she said, well, I've never even been to church. I don't know what that means. What are you talking about? Who, who is Jesus? Well, you talking about the Holy Ghost. What is a ghost? I'm scared of ghosts. 
What is the Holy Ghost? What's the Holy Spirit? What are you talking about? Baptism? I don't even know what baptism means. You tell me be baptized. What is that? What are you talking about? See, you have to believe according to what the apostles taught. Because they they went back and explained. Now I'm about to go through the book of Acts. I'm gonna give you an example of what they what a sermon from the from the apostles was. So you need a you need an example. So let's go to uh let's go to Acts here. And um and look, man, they all the apostles they would start they would go most of the time they would go all the way back to the old testament and work their way all the way up to, to Christ, to Jesus. And explaining who, who Christ is. So, I'm about to give you here, um, give you here an example really quick. Uh, we'll start with, um, okay. So, we're going to go to the book of Acts. And I'm going to go to chapter 4. We're going to go to Acts 4. And this is where I believe um, Peter was having some beef with some people who weren't um, weren't trying to believe him. They they thought, oh man, they're making a disturbance, and we're upset because these guys are teaching something that we don't believe. All right, all right. So chapter uh, Acts chapter four. Um, some priest, the officer in charge of the temple guards and some Sadducees approached Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. These religious authorities were greatly annoyed. Peter and John were teaching the people and spreading the message that the dead will come back to life through Yahshua, through Christ. So the temple guards arrested them. Since it was already evening, they put Peter and John into jail until the next day. But many of those who heard the message became believers, so the number of men who believed grew to 5,000. The next day, the Jewish rulers, the leaders, and the experts in Moses' teaching met in Jerusalem. Um, sc scroll down just a little bit. They made Peter and John stand in front of them and ask, By what power or in whose name did you do this? Then Peter, <laughs> because he was filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter's the pot, one of the apostles, by the way, of Christ, who actually walked with Christ, he says, rulers and leaders of the people, today you are cross-examining us about the good we did for a crippled man. You want to know how he was made well. You and all the people of Israel must understand that this man stands in your presence with a healthy body because of the power of Yahshua Christ from Nazareth. You crucify Yahshua Christ, but God had brought him back to life. He is the stone that the builders rejected. The stone has become the cornerstone. No one else can save us. Indeed, we can be saved only by the power of the one name, Yahshua, and not by any other person. And after they found out that Peter and John had no education or special training, they were surprised to see how boldly they spoke. They realized that these men had been with Christ. When they saw the man who was healed standing with Peter and John, they couldn't say anything against the two apostles. So they ordered Peter and John to leave the council room and begin to discuss the matter amongst themselves. They said, what should we do with these men? Clearly they performed a miracle that everyone in Jerusalem knows about. So, um, let me, let me, let me go back. Um, this is where he refers to scripture. He says in verse 11, this is where he said in verse 11, he says, he is the stone that the builders rejected. The stone has become the cornerstone. Or in another version, it says um, in scripture, the stone that you builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This refers to, uh, give me a second here. This refers to... Uh, I'm sorry. One more moment here. Uh, Psalms. Okay, this refers to Psalms 118.22. Let me go back to Psalms 118.22. So, as they're, as they're sitting there even being persecuted and being cross-examined, they're quoting scripture. They're quoting the, the Old Testament. And like I said, you have to believe on Christ according to the Old Testament. So you have to find Christ in the Old Testament. 
And so when it comes to certain references of the Old Testament, they're speaking of Christ. They, so we're going back to Psalms. I'm about to go read this Psalms real quick that he was quoting, uh, Peter was quoting. Because he says, the stone that you builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. And if you know cornerstone, cornerstone is like the, the foundation rock or piece that builds up a whole building or house or anything like that. So they're saying that this one that you killed, the one that you killed, the, uh, Jesus, who you killed, has now been raised from the dead and has become the foundation for everything. The same one that you that you murdered. All right, so we're going back to Psalms 118. Um, I'm going to start at verse uh, 20. It says, this is the gate of Yahweh through which righteous people will enter. Um, I give thanks to you because you have answered me. You are my savior. You are my savior. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Yahweh is responsible for this, and it is amazing for us to see. This is the day Yahweh has made. Let us rejoice and be glad today. We beg you, O Yahweh, save us. We beg you, O Yahweh, give us success Blessed is the one who comes in the name of Yahweh. Who was that? That was Jesus. That was Yahshua. So whenever I say, you know, whoever comes in the name of the Lord, we're talking about, we're talking about Jesus. This is all in Old Testament. You know, uh, David is writing this and he says, I give thanks to you. He's in, he's in this writing. He's praising. He's just praising Yahweh. He's praising God. He says, I give you thanks because you have answered me. You are my savior. He's talking about Yahweh. You are my savior. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. So he's when you when you read in the Old Testament and they're mentioned Savior, you're the same, you're the arm of the Lord, the branch of the Lord. All that is talking about Christ. And this is a big revelation that I'm giving you right now. So if you want to believe in Jesus, you want to believe in God, if you want to walk towards belief, you have to to believe according to the Old Testament scriptures, okay? Um, and one last thing I'm going to I'm going to end with and as I told you all last week, this is my go-to. This is my go-to every time. Um, I'm going to make sure that you understand this because this is without uh, without this this scripture um, it's going to be hard for some of you to make those steps towards um, belief. And I want you to, and I definitely want you to believe. So um, we're going to start here. I'm going to Luke. I'm going to Luke. Uh, sorry, Luke 24. Let's go back to Luke 24. Bear with me one more moment. Luke 24. All right, Luke 24, and we're going to start at verse, this is after um, Christ had uh, resurrected and came back to the, talk to his disciples who were going to be converted to apostles eventually. Get dressed, girl. What are you doing? You still have the same clothes on. Did you take a shower or two? Go take a shower. I need, I need, you need, okay, there's clothes, you have clothes that you've already, I've already washed and stuff. Look in my room. There's a basket in my room. Look in there. And then there's clothes. There might be clothes in the basement, but look in my room in a basket. There's a whole bunch of clothes in there. Look through those, okay? All right. I'm about to help you in a moment because I'm almost done here. All right. Sorry for you, for that, y'all. Um, it says uh, we're going to Luke 24, okay? So Christ has been resurrected. He come back, and he's talking to the disciples. He comes back to see them. So then he said, and this we're going to verse 44, Luke 24, 44. Then he said to them, these are the words I spoke to you while I was still with you. I told you that everything written about me in Moses' teachings, the prophets, and the Psalms had to come true. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And at the beginning of this, I told you, whenever you see it in, the, in the Bible, in the New Testament, when it mentions scriptures, he's talking about the Old Testament. So Jesus himself had come back to them and he told them, look, man, the whole time I've been with you, I've been explaining you everything about me. 
according to the Old Testament. Everything written about me in the Old Testament, and when it says Moses' teachings, it's talking about the first five books of the Bible. Uh, they call that the Pentateuch. Um, and the prophets, all the, all the scriptures after that. And the Psalms, everything that David wrote concerning himself. So everything that was talked about in uh, the Old Testament concerning him, he's explaining, he explained to the disciples that they would understand so they can cross reference. So when they're up there talking about, you know, you need to believe in, in Yahshua, you need to believe in Jesus. They have to have some, some reference point and their reference point is the Old Testament. Case in point, the example that I read earlier where uh, Peter and John were being questioned and they quoted uh, the, 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 build, the, the stone that you, the builders rejected has now become the chief cornerstone. So he's quoting Psalms 118.22 as we read. Um, and so anyway, so then he opened, so go back to verse 44. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, Scripture says that the Messiah would suffer and that he would come back to life on the third day. Scripture also says that by the authority of Yahshua or Christ, people would be told to turn to God and change the way they think and act so that their sins will be forgiven. This will be told to people from all nations beginning in the city of Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. Oof, man, that's powerful, man. That's powerful. So you have to believe. You have to believe according to the apostles. Because they were the ones who were sent. They're the only ones who are going to teach you the good news. And if anybody today who is a modern preacher, teacher, pastor, whatever, if they're not echoing anything that the apostles are saying and not following it, then you might want to question who they are. You might want to stay away from them. Because they're the ones who were sent by God to teach salvation. Okay? And uh, one last little thing. Let me see here. I think, and then I'm going to wrap this up. Let me see here. One moment, one moment, one moment, one moment. One moment. Alright, and... Uh, bear me one more moment here, and I'm going to hit one more little point, and then we're going to be done here. Uh, one last little point. One last little thing I want to share with y'all before we, before we get out of here. Um, 43. All right, so now I'm going to uh, getting to what another I'm going to give you an example of, of something that they preached. And, and and or teached and this is this is something where they're declaring they're declaring the gospel okay all right um, where the apostles are out there preaching and teaching and this is this is this is an example of a sermon this is an example of something you probably should hear okay um, all right so we're going to go to Acts chapter 10 and I'm going to start at uh, verse 34. Now, Peter is dealing with a man, um, Cornelius. So, so there he's just he's preaching. So then Peter said, Now I understand that God doesn't play favorites. Rather, whoever respects God and does what is right is acceptable to him in any nation. God sent his word to the people of Israel. He did that by way of his prophets and Moses and everybody. Okay, and brought them the good news of peace through Yahshua Christ, through Jesus Christ. This Yahshua Christ, Jesus Christ, is everyone's Lord. You know what happened th throughout Judea. Everything began in Galilee after John spread the news about baptism. You know that God anointed Yahshua from 
Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Yeshua went everywhere and did good things, such as healing everyone who was under the devil's power. Yeshua did these things because God was with him. We can testify to everything Yahshua did in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. People hung him on a cross and killed him, but God brought him back to life on the third day. God didn't show him to all the people. He showed Yahshua to his, witness, apostle, his witnesses, apostles he had already chosen. We apostles are those men who ate and drank with Yahshua after he came back to life. He ordered us to warn the people God has appointed Yahshua to judge the living and the dead. In addition, all the prophets, talking about the Old Testament, all the prophets testified that people who believe in the one name, Yahshua or Jesus, receive forgiveness for their sins through him. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit came to everyone who heard his message. All the believers who circumcised and all who had come with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured on people who were not Jewish. They heard these non-Jewish people speaking in other languages and praising God. Then Peter said, no one can refuse to baptize these people with water. They have received the Holy Spirit in the same way that we did. So Peter ordered that they should be baptized in the name of Jesus or Yahshua Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for several days. Here we go. So, the Old Testament spoke and it said that there would be, that God would, would come to restore man. He would restore man through this one that would come. Jesus. And when Jesus came, he was born. He preached, he teach. Now who is Jesus? Jesus is God himself, manifested in flesh. He came to die for your sins, to take your sins away. And all those who believe in him, they weren't going to perish, but they will have everlasting life. Okay? John, let me go, let me just, I'm, I'm going to hit y'all with this here. Oh my goodness. This is, this is what I read earlier yesterday. I'm hitting y'all with, I'm sorry. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And this is Yahshua out of his mouth. And he himself is quoting Old Testament. Here we go. Mm. So. He's talking to Nicodemus, Yahshua. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. He says, you're a well-known teacher of Israel. Can't you understand this? I can guarantee this truth. We know what we're talking about, and we confirm what we've seen. Yet you don't accept our message. If you don't believe me when I tell you about things on earth, how will you believe me when I tell you about things in heaven? No one has gone to heaven except the Son of Man who came from heaven. So he's telling you. No one has gone to heaven except the Son of Man who came from heaven. So he's talking about himself. Him being God himself. Manifested himself in the flesh as a man, as a son. He's the one who is in heaven, both in heaven and earth at the same time. That's what he's telling him. So then he quotes Old Testament scripture. Because even... God himself is going to back himself by, by his own word if he's speaking. So then he says, as Moses lifted up the snake on a pole in the desert, so the son of man must be lifted up. Then everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. God loved the world this way. He gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, 
but to save the world. Those who believe in him won't be condemned. But those who don't believe are already condemned because they don't believe in God's only son. This is why people are condemned. The light came into the world, yet people love the dark rather than the light because their actions were evil. People who do what is wrong hate the light and don't come to the light. They don't want their actions to be exposed. But people who do what is true come to the light so that the things they do for God may be clearly seen. Okay, so, as we understand here, look. Those who believe in him won't be condemned, but those who don't believe are already condemned. Woo! Listen, listen, listen. This is important. This is important. You have to believe. You have to hear the gospel by somebody sent. You have to believe by somebody sent. The only people that were sent were the apostles. So the church today have to echo the apostles. And the only thing they preached and teach, they went back to the Old Testament. They said, look, Old Testament says that there's going to be one that's going to come that's going to save us. It's going to regenerate. It's going to save, regenerate everything, regenerate all men. Um, Abraham, mm -hmm. Old Testament, Abraham was promised that before um, he was promised um, that by his seed, all nations would be blessed. By his seed, that seed was Christ. And so Christ come has come and he gave his life and and he was raised from the dead. If you accept and believe this, you too will die to your sins, but be born again, be, be resurrected from the dead as well. This is the truth. The truth is you accept Christ's. You will not you will not die. There's no fear of death. Death death where is your sting? If you accept him, you will be given power to overcome this world. Okay. So I will now declare the truth to you. The truth is Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. Jesus is the invis is the visible image of the invisible God. God there's only one God, there's only one Lord, and that is Jesus. Okay? He is the savior. If you trust and you believe and you accept him, and you accept the truth of who he is, that he took away your sins by getting on that cross and sacrificing him lot his life to usher in a new life for you and all of us. And you too can have salvation. Now, you have to identify with who he is. You have to identify with his death. You have to identify with his burial and you have to identify with his resurrection. And the only way you can do that is you have to repent. You have to turn away from your sins. Any wrongdoings, you have to repent. I've had to repent. And trust me, I'm not perfect at all. I'm not perfect at all. But in Christ, I'm made perfect. I'm made righteous. As a man, I'm not. But in Christ, I'm made perfect. He says, repent. Repent every one of you and be baptized, be buried with him in baptism in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin. And you shall receive the power, the Holy Spirit, the power that will resurrect you into a new life now and in the future. Okay. That that's a gift. That's a promise to you. If you accept Christ. OK, that's your gift. That's your gift that's waiting for you. OK. And it's waiting for all of us if we accept it.
I know it, it for some this sounds crazy. It sounds it sounds ludicrous. But no, but Yahshua Yahshua says those who believe in me won't be condemned. You won't be condemned. You won't be judged. You won't be you won't be destroyed. You won't be destroyed after you quote unquote leave this world and, and die. But he said, but those who don't believe are already condemned because they don't believe in a humanity that God presented to us. See, some people don't believe that God came in a body of flesh. They don't believe that. They think that's crazy. There's religions that say, no, man. Why would God ever become come like one of us? Because, you know, but why wouldn't he? If God created all things, all things, why can't God, and God is manifesting himself as everything around us. What's so hard about him coming in a body of flesh and telling us, look, follow his, follow my, follow the, the, the commands of God. In fact, I'm going to fulfill the commands of God and then I'm going to manifest myself in you. It's nothing hard to believe about that. It's not hard. The thing is, you have to hear it from someone sent. And like it says, as I've said, if they're not echoing that, then you have to question what you're listening to. What are you believing? All right, I um, thank you very much for tuning in. Those who missed this, um, you can go back and, and listen to it. Really good stuff in here. Um, stuff you're probably not going to hear from from a lot of preachers and teachers. Um, and I and I and I and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, be honest. I never went to a seminary at all. I didn't go to no seminary. I didn't go to no uh, nothing like that. But you know what? God led me to people who were sent by God. And I was discipled by other people who were sent by God. Um, and I and the way I was able to determine that was because they echoed exactly what the apostles taught. OK, so um, peace and love until next week. Um, everybody have a good uh, Memorial Day weekend. Um, ask everybody to pray for me and my family. Uh, we're we're going to be out today uh, in Cincinnati at a convention, and um, my kids and I were going to be on the road going there. So just uh, pray for us as we travel. I'm also uh, pray for everybody this weekend on Memorial Day weekend because you know most holidays people get drunk or get high. Um, some people uh, are partying. Some people are depressed because it's Memorial Day, um, because it makes them think about some of their loved ones they've lost. Um, so we pray for peace for them. And uh, anybody who has questions, concerns uh, about things I've taught, uh, please inbox me. Or if you've been moved by this, let me know. Um, and like I said, I'm going to continue to keep these going to people who, uh, for people who don't go to church at all. Or the people who uh, don't go to church on Saturday, on the Sabbath or on Sundays, um, you can tune in to me. I'm going to keep posting these as much as I can. And um, give me some feedback. Let me know uh, what you think about these because um, I, I it, it encourages me to know what you guys think. Um, and I thank you so much. Also, please share these too. Share these because I know like my one I did last week, people shared them. A lot of people are being blessed by these Saturday sermons. Um, I'm going to continue, like I said, I'm going to continue to do these as Lord, long as the Lord leads me. Um, so, as I said, you can go back and listen to this whole thing if you missed it, um, if you're just not coming in. Um, peace and blessings to y'all. I'm out.